Sister Diana from um, Lodiam also, who was in the UK. Alhamdulillah, they took the time and they went to go visit, they went to go visit our offices in the UK. They were able to see the operations happening in the UK. So for me, this is special and this is believing in the work that Islam Kid does. So if you go to anywhere, anywhere, if you're traveling anywhere you know, in the world, and so send us a message. Is there some offices here, you know, go and see what, what our operations are like in those areas or projects. Inshallah, there's our call, uh, Sister Zahira Bam Isma. Alhamdulillah, we work very closely with Sister Zahira Bam for many years. And uh, of course, Zahira Bam comes with a vast uh, knowledge of uh, humanitarian work, humanitarian efforts. And as you can see, you know, um, she asked me not to say, but this is not speech and language therapist and audiologist, advisory, advisory chairperson at the, the Caring Women's Forum, public speaker, mentor, uh, trustee of Islamic Holistic School of Alternative Needs. And of course, many more as you can see. So, inshallah, I don't know what the sister Zaira Baam is about. So, can I round of applause for sister Zaira Baam? Zaira Baam is about. Thank you, babe. The cash money man. I think it's a new round of speech. I only have to say what the round of speech is that we can connect with the part of my introduction. I think I'm speaking to an audience who is well versed already on charity and giving out. But I think I wanted to touch on a few topics today, and I'm really honored and blessed for Islamic Relief for giving me the opportunity for being here. I think I've got a very long-standing relationship with the organization. Um, the one thing that stands out for me is the fact that this is an organization that thrives on building up the youth. If you look at the number of volunteers that come through, it's always something that's thriving on the youth. And I said to say, that's the, the ticket. Because if you can encourage youth to join you, and you can encourage people to be part of this, you understand that you're already setting the legacy for people to take over. Because there are many organizations where we watch where all the people are holding the seats and refusing to move from there. So you're doing the right thing, and I hope you, as much as Fatima said, I'm going to touch on a lot of the points you made, Fatima, and take on from your speech, because I think you made very valid points. Coming in as a volunteer, being part of this, it's very valuable advice to be able to give from the, out, um, from the inside. Abdullah Suji often says to me, there's an Arabic word that a verse that says, Fa'inna tadhabu, where are you going? If you don't know where you're going, how are you actually going to get there? Every single one of you sitting here today is not sitting here by chance. At 28 weeks in your mother's womb, it was already decided that you were going to be here. There's already a plan in place. So if you think you decided today that you were going to pitch up and you were going to have a fun evening out and have dinner, it was already done. It was already set. This has already been planned for you. But what you do with this and how you take it forward is entirely up to you. And I know we always laugh that Zahi Raja always tells people, correct your naya, correct your intention before everything. But this is really true. Because if you have an opportunity to do good and to touch the lives of people, do it. Make your naya beforehand. If you've lost people, if you've got your parents around, make your naya for the Isali Sawab for your good, for your parents, for your children that are still to come, so that the reward is ongoing for you. And never underestimate the power of your naya. It guides every single thing in your life, every part of your purpose. You know, I deal with so many youth around your age. I know, um, I'm assuming many of you are at varsity or just entering a work phase. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. And we can't know what you're doing, having a full plan of action of your life. Because even at our age, and I'm a few decades older than you, I don't even know my whole plan, and it changes. But if you have the ability to understand that there's a purpose in your life, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw that you have value, and you have purpose, and this is why he put you here, that there's something special and something good within each of you, and there's something that you can give to humanity. There's something, because that's what we are as Muslims, right? It's about giving to others. It's what we stand as leaders of Islam. How are we going to spread the word? How are we passing on? And when you understand that that is your purpose, then you'll trust the timing of everything else. If you understand that whatever is written for you is written, no one can change it. Not a single person can take something away from you. Then you won't hesitate to open the doors for others. You're sitting in a volunteer position, and I guarantee you that every single person here has a strength. 
Some of you may be good at administration. Some of you may be really good at organizing events. Some of you really good at talking. Don't be shy to hold back from that. Because no one else is going to know that unless you actually say you're good at it. But if you see a friend who's good at something, don't be afraid to open the door and say, this person's really good at this. Tell Fatima, tell Zaheer, Moe, Fatima, whoever's around, you know what, this person's able to do this. Because if you understand, and like I said earlier, nothing will ever be taken away from you. If you open the door for others, for opportunities for others, I guarantee you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to open those doors for you when you need it. Trust the timing of everything. When we talk about charity, when we talk about dignity, when you walk out, not only are you representatives of Islamic relief, you're ambassadors for Islam. When people watch you, when they're watching you give out charity, do not underestimate what your role is. Never underestimate your words when you cross someone. Be kind. You have no idea what the person sitting right here, right next to you, right now is going through. Every single person is carrying something. It's just packaged differently. Some of us smile and laugh through it, but not just the women, the men too. We all wear masks. We carry ourselves, we walk out, we put on different masks to manage with our friends, with our family, with everything. So if you have no idea what the person next to you is going through, always show kindness. And it takes absolutely nothing away from you to be kind to someone. There's a woman that messages me once every year. I don't even remember what I said to her. But on the day I said it to her, every year from then she messages me to tell me the difference it made in her life. So never underestimate what the impact that you are giving and doing for somebody else. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't place you here by chance. There's a reason you're here. There's a reason you're able to do it. So when I asked you, Fa'inna Tadhabu, where are you going? If your goal is Jannah, this Jana. is your path. This is the road you're walking on. How are you going to get it? And everything we read about hadith, it talks about your akhlaq, your character. That's what's going to get you into Jannah. Be kind to people. Be humble for the work that you're doing. You're not doing anyone a favor when you are giving them this. But you're actually earning your gender points. I ask my daughters every day, what do you do to get your gender points today? And it doesn't have to be anything big. It doesn't have to be anything huge. Yes, we have inspiration, we have mentors, we have dynamic people around us. But it's simple things of, have you been kind? Did you even smile at someone? Did you offer a little bit of assistance or help? And before I end, there's one thing that I have to reiterate. It's about carrying yourself with dignity, dignity, but also offering dignity to other people. When we go out into various rural areas, we often have a habit, and I really hope that it changes with you and the group. Because if you are going to teach other people this, it starts right here. Stop the selfies. I have a huge problem with that. Because you're taking away the dignity of someone that could be me or you on the receiving end of it. I understand the purpose of it, but don't force people to take that. You want to take, take off your hampers, take off everything else around you. But when I talk about dignity, you have to understand about families. A father is supposed to be the role, uh, the head of the family, the caregiver of the family. So as in many uh, of our areas in South Africa, the mothers have had to take that role because we're seeing a lot more single mom families coming on. I think we have to start changing how we do things. When you're giving something to a child in front of their family, the child sees the parent as no longer being the role of a caregiver. The child sees it as somebody else has had to come and do the, my parents' job for me. So if we start pivoting that and we start giving it to the parents to be able to give to their children, we're still maintaining the dignity of the father and the mother in the home as being the providers, the caregivers, and them being the, the providers to their children. We have to change the way we see children as being recipients of charity. Always think, is this something I'm doing with dignity? So when you make your nayah, be conscious. As Muslims, our role is to be conscious in everything that we do. Allah tawakkal. We can say it all the time, but are we truly conscious of it? So it's having a consciousness as we walk, as we talk, as we do things, as we with others. Because if we're conscious of our interactions with people, not only are we keeping ourselves with dignity, but we're giving dignity to all those around us. I'm so proud to see all of you here, and I commend the Islamic Relief Team for constantly having such a dynamic youth group and uh, being able to inspire people to come and to give up their time because you, you're part of something that unfortunately doesn't give you a lot of gratitude or thanks here, but alhamdulillah, this is not what you're looking for here. You're looking to see it in the next slide. 
So if you always remember, Faina tell her where we are going, inshallah, Allah, make your road easy. And may the reward of every single thing you do be seen in your life and in the life of generations to come. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Sisters and Grandma Ismail. Um, those these words that became Panda of One, and inshallah, all of us should do that. And uh, inshallah, I will now move on to our next uh, speaker, inshallah. But before I move on, I'm trying to say, sitting here today, if I can talk about leadership, just uh, Zena also talked about leadership and volunteering and intention. But Alhamdulillah, we've also got a brother Zakir Baam, who's here also in our crowd today. Alhamdulillah. And Zakir started, uh, started the WhatsApp group called the Charity Network Group. So in the Charity Network Group, it's got all the NGOs trying, so his intention is to get all the NGOs to work together. Right? So that's his intention, Alhamdulillah. And it's been going on for so long. And today he spoke to me and he said, Inshallah, together, he wants to work together, hey, and with Islamic Leave, and our volunteers and our team to see how we can make that, uh, how make that go live going forward, Inshallah. So, uh, Zakir, you, our team is with you, Inshallah. And we support you. Shukran. So, inshallah, now we hand over to our regional manager, Brother Nawaz Mohammed. Round of applause to Nawaz Mohammed, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, it's uh, really an honor here to be here today. And I was going to touch on the value of volunteering, but what more can I say about that that Fatima and Zaira has mentioned? So, everything happened by the grace of Allah, but all of this wouldn't have been possible. We all standing, we all here today representing a brand, a logo, uh, an organization would have, wouldn't have been possible without the efforts of one man. So way back in 1984, there was one, three, one man with an idea, no strategy, no vision, and just an idea to do something. And uh, following a visit from Khartoum, where he went for a medical uh, conference, he saw the suffering that was taking place in Sudan, in Ethiopia. And uh, he came back and he decided, oh well, I forgot. He noticed one observation was that there were no Muslims collecting money or providing aid in that area, albeit there were many, many, many Muslims in, that, uh, in those countries. So during his layover in Egypt, doctor just show me a sign if I get anything wrong. Uh, he decided to do a collection and uh, his first collection was from a nine-year-old Egyptian boy. And during that stay, he collected something in the region of 1,500 Egyptian pounds. Fast forward uh, 39 years and Islamic Relief today, we are in 42 countries. We are doing projects in over 100 countries and with a volunteer base of over 5,000 volunteers, which you are all part of. See you. So, without uh, further ado, Zahir was supposed to have uh, yeah. next video, yeah. start that off. So, everyone, okay. just watch this video, inshallah. Yeah, it's a short clip that just we started because of the name. So, the name of the people in Africa who have the name is correct. When we saw the images, and the religion in Dairo, in hundreds and thousands, in the whole of Africa, that I am today. And this move, me and my community. And uh, so really, there was no plan. There was no boardroom to sit down and discuss and communicate and read. It was the image. In the next world, we don't have a box. We just have a small donation box. And we, when we had the first telephone line, we thought, here we are, we're going to connect and communicate with the outside world. And we don't have any employee, that's right, all volunteers coming. But the most important thing in the first three or five years was the focus in the needs of the people.
Okay, so please welcome Dr. Ani Albena. Very good. <clears throat> Can you adjust uh, my image because I have a photogenic image? <laughs> Don't keep looking at me. I'll be, uh, I'll be a magician, making taking you around to different parts of the world. Can you be a magician? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Rasulullah, what to do after Zahira and Fatima spoke? They left me helpless and tired and cannot speak, speechless, helpless and what? A necklace, legless, and everything. This is the role of women in Islam. Whoever comes and tell you, that Islam is demeaning woman. Tell him or her, see me around. What Shurib was doing to a woman one or two centuries ago, and what the Prophet Sallallahu and the Quran liberated the woman and gave her dignity and credibility 1400 years ago. Don't joke with me. Don't play games with me. If you have a house made out of glass, don't stone people, because you will destroy your house. Got it? Fatima and Zahira and Lola. Anybody call Lola? No. Today, we're talking about a journey. Nearly next January be 40 years. A journey of young people. Most of the people who started the Islamic Leaf or either secondary school young students or university students, male and the female. Some of them at the moment working at United Nations, some of them at working at different governmental level in the UK and other countries, some of them are CEO of international organizations. Started with you from the age of 18, 17, 19, 12, but they made it because they believed that they can make it. That's why they made it. Don't ever and never in your life demean yourself. Allah has created us to represent Him on earth. Custodian of the universe. A custodian like any one of you or any one of us, is somebody who is a change maker. Is somebody that you can do things, can deliver, can think, can build, can construct, can save, can help, can do a smile inside the heart of humanity. Can have a heart which is having a capacity for 8 billion people. Your heart could be two, three hundred grams, but has the capacity to accommodate eight billion people and more. Can have the heart which can care for animals, for birds, for climate, for any creation of Allah. Because you are the follower of the teacher of humanity. Never ever, never ever say that I cannot do it, but say, Inshallah, I will, not I can, I will do it. Because the will comes to us from Allah. If He looks at our heart and mind and soul and said, yes, you deserve to have it. But if you want to give what you have to get what you want, if you want to get what you have, you have to give what you want. What, if you want to get what you have, what, what you want, you have to give what you have. This is the message. As Brother Zahir, no, no, Nawaz said, we started with no resources, no office, 
نو دسک نو چیر نو تلیفون نو انترنت نو بجت We start with, with the equation of no. We are the no people who makes or who make the yes for others. You want it? Yes, I'll give it to you. This was our role. Never let no to break your back. Make your heart to give what people want because you will be able to deliver what others need if you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not sure who said it was Fatma or Zahira about today is the 16th of May 2023. It was written to me before I was born that I'll be here on that day at this hour, at this moment. And to see each and every one of you. Everything is written in the book. Everything is written in the book. Thousands and thousands of years before our birth. Let me take you around to the magnificence of the Creator. Give me any computer who can count the number of the falling leaves of the trees from the far west of the universe to the far east of the universe and the far north of the universe to the far south of the universe at the second, by the second, by the minute, by the hour. Get all the computers on earth collectively to count. They will not be able to count. Let me a computer and count the number of the grains of sands in the deserts, globally, and put them on their computer. The number of the beings inside or underneath the sands, particles. No computer can give it to you. But one computer can give it to you. The book of Allah only gave this to you. The number of babies carried in the wombs of the mother, babies of human beings, of animals, of birds, of insects, the number of the dead babies, and deformed babies, and mutilated babies, and good babies. Born at the second, by the hour, by the minute, no computer can give it to you, but Allah can give it to us in a book. But she knows what is there. Collectively, all this, to be collectively by the second written in different books, accurate, to the point, beyond the point, to the maximum, beyond the maximum. You are very proud, sister, you. Yes, what's your name? Teresa. Teresa. Raisa. 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 Sister Raisa. President. Raisa? G? Raisa is his president, isn't it? You want to become president of South Africa? <laughs> Amin, Amin. I forgot now. Oh, the, what do you call it? 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 The metaverse. What do you mean? Come here. You come here, yes. And you come here. What do you mean by metaverse? That is, I'm IT. So you mean a metaverse as in what's up right now? I'm not going to explain my question. <laughs> okay, uh, metaverse. That's uh, extra information on information. <laughs> Go on, metaverse. I don't know. Very good. She answered the right answer. She doesn't know, she doesn't know. Carry on. <laughs> Metaverse is a new world that will let you to navigate through it. Alright? So you might be sitting at home in your bedroom, in the front room, dining room, in the school. 
and you can see a different things in a different world. That's right? I will challenge you with a verse that saying that Allah has risen the skies without a pillar that you can see. These skies which you can see up there is risen or are risen by pillars that no one of us can see. And this is in Surah Ra'd verses 2. From the depth of the seventh earth to the height of the seventh sky. You know how high it is? You cannot calculate the height of the pillar or the unsealed pillar of Allah which has been created millions of years ago. So what's your metaverse world will do, will say about that? It cannot. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> you said that you are IT man. Go on. Can't do anything, to be honest. Okay. That means if you worship the one or the true one who created everyone and maintains the life, make it sustainable for everyone, you are on the right track. A pillar. You are now, what's the area he called? Huh? Green side. Green side. Green side. Outside the doors is one of the millions of pillars that no one of us can see is holding the sky and goes from the depth of the seven earth to the height of the magnificent height of the seventh sky. Can you imagine that with your metaverse world? You can. Because no matter what, we learn, we learn an atom or a letter from the encyclopedia, the unlimited encyclopedia of his knowledge. Even if you use the ocean as an ink to write his knowledge, the ocean would be dried up. Then you use another ocean, it would be dried up. And the knowledge of the Creator is endless and everlasting. Stand up for the one who gave you everything because he does not need anything from us. Stand up for the one who provides you with knowledge, with the source of power, with the source of vision, with the source of direction because he wants us to direct our direction into him. And he does not need us. If you talk about a journey of an organization, we have not talking about a journey of humanity. We have not talking about, uh, we're talking about a journey of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did we? Because we don't know. We don't know. We receive a messenger and we make mockery of him. Of him. Messenger and a prophet. Oh my God, he's not from my family. That's what happened to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what happened to Isa Alayhi Salam. That's what happened to Musa Alayhi Salam. That's what happened to Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Everybody was making joke and mockery and making bad names about them. But they were the right people and the others were the wrong people. For us today, the celebration is you. For us today, the road is made for you. For us today, the future is stands for you to be made by you for others, not for yourself. If you want to live forever, you live for others. If you live for others, you live forever. You got it?
So, the journey of Islamic relief reminds us of a seed that each and every one of you would like to plant in a fertile soil. So you have to find the right seed. You have to look for the fertile, suitable soil. You have to protect the seed by watering it and nurturing it. And you have to stand up patiently to see the seed become vegetation, a tree, and be patient to take the hardship of looking after the vegetation till it becomes fruitful tree. It's not a joke. I want to make an organization. Organization comes like this. It doesn't work this way. It takes a long journey to build a block, to build a stone, to build one mile. You have to be patient for all this. As I was talking to this group of people in the hotel, or where, 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 where was in, 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 in the, in, what do you call it? Hotel D or residence? Okay. No, Kurtuba. Kurtuba. This afternoon or this, uh, uh, this, this afternoon, okay. You know what, sisters and brothers? To build an organization like this, during the month of Ramadan, in the first seven or eight years, <laughs> none of us spend one day with the family during Ramadan. We were on the road 24-7 from the beginning of Ramadan, the first day, to the day of Eid. Every night, every day, we are in a different city, in a different mosque, in a different town with different people to plant the seeds in UK, in America, in Germany, in uh, Holland, in Belgium, in France, and others. None of those young people spend Ramadan with their wives or with their children. None of them had iftari or sihri with them. And this is the journey of suffering to bring the fruit of the fruitful trees to generations to come. مثل كلمة طيبة كشيء طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء تؤتي كلها كل حين بإذن ربها. A good word is like the good tree. أصلها ثابت its root is deeply rooted in the depths of earth. وفرعها في السماء its branches. High in the sprawling skies, in the vast skies, bring its fruits, different fruits, at different season, differently. So each branch of your tree bearing different fruits at different season. Because you are the kalima tayyiba, you are the good word, and you are the good tree. Each one of you are such a kalima and a tree are such a word of Tawheed and the tree of goodness, a word of submission to the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fruit of action to serve, to protect, to help, to support, to guide, to teach. You can't have become a good tree without having good program in your life to help others. And our journey starts today but we don't know where it's going to end, where, how, by whom. But we have to plan for the beginning, which we don't know, we have no choice of our parents, and our journey of to plan it for step by step, step by step, step by step, but we don't know where it is. Nowadays, my wife and I, she is making dua for me like a mother making a dua for her child. Because any time I might not come back home. Because at this age, 
You know how old I am? Oh. 27. <laughs> Don't look a day over 20. Don't look a day over 26. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Okay. Hold it, hold it. Don't look a day over 26. <laughs> no, no. I'm 27. Don't look a day over 27. I'm 28. <laughs> so we're going to keep going on this. No, no, I'm, I'm 27. Can you believe that I'm 27? You are the next. I'm 40. Huh? I'm 40. What I'm younger than you. <laughs> okay. I'm younger than you. Okay. I pause, huh? <laughs> Go on. Okay, so I'm 40. I'm 27. Okay. So why are we lying here anyways? I'm 22 actually. <laughs> You're 22? 22. I'm 27. Mm. Okay, okay. Hey, I'm 19. <laughs> huh? Very good. What we need to learn from this I always fail She is not haram. It's not a mistake. I never passed any test from the first time. To never say something which didn't happen. In my doctor of medicine exam, which is a PhD, I failed miserably on my nose. Major failure. Then I passed it. My driving license test I failed five times. In my license, to get my license to work as a medical doctor in UK, I failed, I think, four or five times. So I am the fall man. Keep falling or failing. Falling or failing, which one? Uh, failing. Failing and falling. Failing and falling. Both of them. Oh. <laughs> But I'm still surviving. Learn from the failure how to make the success. Don't let failure to stop you. Failure can take you forward if you try. The great historian or the great scientists in human history of humanity failed many times. To achieve what they want. But after 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, trials and more, they manage to succeed. Because what? Because they believe in what they were doing and they believe that they can do it and they did it. You got it? So never ever think that those people who started 30, 40 years ago were genius. Oh, oh no way. We were stupid. We were doing wrong things. I came with the phone. You know this image? You know this image? Is it in Johannesburg or where is this one? Or there? Huh? The, whatever it is. I came here. 1995. No, this one image is 1995. You know why I came here? Because I failed when I was the director of Islamic Relief. I overspent money without having an accountability to know how much money in the account, how much to spend. We discovered in 1995 that we have not enough money. So during this year of 1995, we have to travel. They sent me to travel from as far east as Malaysia, as far West as Latin America, Colombia, and Panama, as far south as South Africa. To raise fund. So we planted the seed in Malaysia. We planted the seed in South Africa. And we encourage people in Latin America to plant their own seeds. A mistake could be corrected and we can work. 
So Alhamdulillah, 95, this image was, how old is Islamic Reef in South Africa, brother Nawaz? It was 19 years. So we did not start 20, nearly 30 years ago. It was started 19 years ago. But the visit was 1995. Don't even say, that I went there in 1995 and nobody listened to me. No. It will come when Allah decided to make it happen. Same for Malaysia. It came in the year 2000, 2002, 2003, when we met with Ton Mahathir, Mahathir Muhammad. And we opened the office nearly 20 or 21 years ago. So, planting a seed not an easy. Look after the tree. And the seeds from such a tree will be carried by those who eat the fruits. Birds, animals, and insects. And take it from this soil to this soil. Who was Fata? You know what Fata? Come here. Fata. You are Fata. Come on. How old are you? Exactly. Ibrahim was 18, 20. And how old are you? Come on here. Okay. Ibrahim was a fata. When he started to talk about the idols, fatan yadkuruhum yuqalu lahu Ibrahim. A fata. A young man at the age of 18, 19, 20, Looked at those idols, statues. Cannot benefit, cannot harm, cannot talk, cannot sit, cannot eat, cannot drink, and speak. And he started to destroy, destroy or the, the destroy is it? Destroy. Each one of them. And when they came in the evening, oh my God, who did this to our lords? We have heard a young man, what's his name? Sa'ad. Huh? Sa'ad. Sa'ad. Not Ibrahim. <laughs> I can call you Ibrahim, huh? Make you Ibrahim. Go back to your father tonight and say, my name is Ibrahim. <laughs> Got it? Now you are Ibrahim. <laughs> and they come to ask Ibrahim. He said, no, no, it's not me. It's not me. It is this big uh, statue. Ask him. Ask him. He looked at one other and said, Ha, oh, oh, ha, oh. ha. He is right. He can speak. But the other group said, No, 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 no. Don't listen to him. Support and give victory to your lords. Huh? They said, Burn him and keep the burning process to the skin, the skin of his body. They made the biggest fire, and they thrown him inside the fire, isn't it? Then Allah said what? Said to the fire, Allah, be cool and peace for Ibrahim. The journey of Ibrahim, Younger than your age. Okay? The journey of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam, who started it with a woman and with a young boy at the age of nine or ten and with a friend, four individuals in the middle of the desert. 1444 years ago and now is followed by 1.8 billion people. Most of them have heard of him but have never seen him. A journey. Look at the journey at the first stages of suffering, of bewilderness, of agony, of torture, of homelessness, deprivation, Killing. But people become patient because they have an aim and objective. 
that they want to achieve, and they did achieve that. That's why never give up easily, and never let anyone to let you down, or to put you down, or to backstab you. And if somebody backstab you, or scandal monger you, say peace be upon you. The Khatabahum al Jahruna Qalu Salam, and when the exuant one speak to them and make mockery of them, say thank you, peace be upon you. I have no time for you. Focus on what you need to deliver. Because the enemies of humanity would love you to lose your track. Don't lose your track. Focus on it. You fail, so what? You fail, so what? You fail, so what? Because I will try, and I will try, and I will try, and I will succeed. There is no success without hardship.